Collections like arrays and lists are part of what make programming languages so powerful. Um, however, it's very helpful if they have the ability to do more than just the accessing and possibly uh, updating values that we've seen so far. And this additional functionality is provided by the methods that you can call on them. It just so happens that Scala's collection libraries are very rich and provide you with a large number of methods. And we want to go through and introduce a number of those methods to you in these videos. We're going to start off with methods that give you parts of collections. So we'll run Scala and so that we have something to play with we'll make a uh, really doesn't matter if we make an array or a list we'll call it a as an array that has an assortment of different numbers in it okay turns out all the methods that we're about to see can be used on both arrays and lists so I'm just going to work with this array named a of course, if you happen to substitute in a list, that will work just fine as well. So the first set of methods that I, that I want to discuss are methods that give you parts of a collection. So you get some fraction of, of what the collection had. The first one, and I'm going through these in alphabetical order, is called drop. And drop takes a single argument that is an integer, and it will drop off that many elements from the left side, the beginning of the collection. So if I drop two from this array, that means that the five and the two, the first two elements are going to be thrown away and we get back an array with just what's left over there. Okay, so that's the drop method. There is an init method. You might remember that the list has a tail that I said was an efficient way to do things. And it, in some ways, is the opposite of tail. Instead of giving you everything after the first element, it gives you everything before the last element. Just like tail has the head equivalent, and it has a last. And so you can ask for the last element in a collection specifically. We can also ask for a slice of a collection, and this takes two indices and that you could call from and to, so where we want to start and where we want to end, and we should be specific about this. So I'm going to pass in two as my starting location, which happens to be the nine, and then let's see, this would be so zero, one, two, three, four. I'll pass in four. So as you can see that we actually don't get the one. And this is just like the substring method on strings. Slice is inclusive in the first index and exclusive on the second index. Uh, so whatever you put as the second index should be one beyond the last value that you actually want to get. We can break a collection in to two pieces by calling split at. So if I call split at three, I actually get back a tuple. So this was called on a single array events and I get a tuple with two arrays events. And the value that I pass in is how many values are going to go into the first collection and then everything else will be in the second collection. So that gives us a, a nice way to, to break the collection in two. Drop also has a counterpart, so we could drop off the first few elements. You can also take the first few elements. Okay, so instead of getting rid of them, I get back a collection that only has the first three here. There is also a drop right where it drops off the last three elements and there is a take right which gives you back a collection that only has the last three elements. So this is kind of a survey of just some of the methods that you could use to get parts 
of a collection. Once again, we looked at draw, init, last, slice, which gives us some section of a collection, split at, which breaks it in two, take, and then drop right and take right, which work from the right side or the back side of the collection.